This is usually represented as a triangle where you have going up the memory here, you have higher speeds. So at the top, you're looking at the fastest memory and at the bottom, you're looking at the slowest memory but you also have the opposite with the capacity. So at the top, you have the smallest memory, and at the bottom, you have the largest amount of memory available to you. Cost also follows this triangle. When you look at cost per megabit, gigabit, whatever the measurement is, when you look at the bottom of the triangle, you have the lowest cost, and when you look at the top of the triangle, you have the highest cost. When you look here at the top, you're looking at the ALU, you're looking at the register, uh, then right below that, you're looking at cache, because remember, at this point, you're still in SRAM, which is uh, transistor-based and fast. Then you might have some levels of cache that are off the CPU core. Those might be a little bit slower than the ones that are on the CPU core. Then you might have your main memory, right? So this is your RAM. This is that DRAM that is going to, you know, hold gigabits of information that you are working with. This is your primary storage, right? This is all the things that the CPU can address directly. Meaning if I give the CPU an address and say, load a piece of information from memory address, you know, 32564, then that means that the memory can see that address. 32564 can be requested from cache, and if cache doesn't have it, it'll go through the levels of cache until it gets to, to DRAM, and then RAM will say, okay, I have that thing, here's 32564, and it will send it back up the chain, and it will actually, by the way, insert that into cache so that next time you look for it, it might have it, and it will make it all the way back up to the ALU. Anything down here is secondary storage. This is information that the CPU cannot directly access. When I mentioned before that your operating system keeps track of files stored on disk, those things are accessed in this manner. And when you load that file, you take the file off of your flash or your hard drive storage and put it into your main memory, at which point the CPU can then directly access it. These things are much slower than anything up here, even if the flash storage is made out of SSD and is technically transistor-based, it is still many times slower than using RAM because it is secondary storage and it has to be brought from the secondary storage into primary storage before you can actually use it. We can go even beyond that and we can think about things like tape, what well, we used to be tape backups back in the day, but now we think of as cloud storage. You can use different forms of cloud storage to store information that's not even on your computer at all. So now you have to wait for a network connection to bring that information to you, and depending on the speed of your network connection, that may take you know, different amounts of time.